Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our FA-18C and we're looking at different types of bombing. So the three modes that we're going to be looking at is manual bombing, CCIP bombing and auto bombing. These three methods of bombing can be used with guided bombs or non-guided bombs. We're going to be using non-guided bombs today but I have covered guided bombs in separate videos. So the first thing we'll do is go to the armament screen and have a quick look what we can have. So if we go to pylon 7 here, we go to bombs, we can, if we start with the CBU-99, a cluster munition, cluster bomb, unguided. We've got GBU-10, 12, 16. They are laser-guided bombs of different sizes. A Mark 20 Rock Eye, which is another cluster bomb. Mark 82, 500 pound, unguided slick bomb. Mark 82 Snake Eye, that is a high drag version of a Mark 82. And the Y is another high drag version of the Mark 82. The Mark 83, slick, unguided, 1,000 pound. Mark 84, slick, unguided, 2,000 pound. And we've got racks here that can ca carry multiples of various bombs. So, for instance, we've got a BRU-33 that can carry two of the Mark 83s. And we've also got here a BRU-41A, which carries six times BDU-33 training bombs. So we're going to give us a loadout that allows us to show off three different types of methods of bombing. And as well as that, I'll show three different methods of setting up our bombs for the drop as well. We'll try and cover as much as we can in one video. Okay, so these are the pylons that we can have bombs on. On pylons 3, 5 and 7, we've got a total of 6 times Mark 82 slicks. We're going to be using auto bombing mode for these and we're going to be dropping them in a ripple. Then on pylons 2, we've got a Mark 83 1000 pound bomb, which we're going to be dropping with a CCIP dive bomb. And then on the edge here, we've got a Mark 84, which we're going to be dropping with a manual method. It's a bit naughty to have an asymmetric load like this, but uh, we can get away with it for this video. Request refueling. While they're getting loaded up, let's have a look at the controls we're going to be using today. So we're going to be using weapon release button to actually drop the bombs. We're going to be using TDC controller depress. Also TDC up, down, left and right. Sensor select forward and sensor select aft and undesignate if we need to cancel a target. Incomplete. Okay, so we're going to set up our bombs on the ground, set up the bomb programs. Menu, stores. We're first going to look at our 84 and we're going to set that up for a manual bombing mode. So we've got mode and we're going to go for manual and we've got the M views, which we're going to go for nose. We're going to have the nose set as the fuse for all of these bombs. Additionally, there are tail and nose tail. And we've got the E fuse, which we're going to have for instance. Out of interest, we can have off. We can have a vertical height selection. We can have instant and a delay one and a delay two. The delays will give us uh, penetration if we want to have penetration. And you can see here that it's updated our mode. M fuse, E fuse. Additionally, we've got the program here. We've got quantity one, multiples one. Because we've only got one bomb we drop, we're not going to change that. And we've also got reticle at zero. Zero, we will change that once we're in the air. So let's go to the Mark 83 now. It's just a single bomb. We're going to drop it in CCIP aiming mode. And exactly the same, nose fuse with an instant fuse. And then the Mark 82s that we're going to ripple. We're going to have mode. We're going to set it on auto. We're going to have in, uh, no, sorry, and instant again. Now, in regards to the program with these Mark 82s, it's going to be slightly different because we're going to drop these in a ripple. So what we're going to do is change these settings here with the UFC. So we've clicked on UFC. We're going to go to quantity. How many bombs do we want to drop with one press of the release button? I want to drop all six. Enter. Then how many bombs do I want to drop at a time? So uh, if I press the button, all six bombs will drop in a ripple one two three four five six how many do i want to drop at each iteration do i want single bombs to drop do i want them to drop in pairs do i want them to drop in threes i want them to drop in just singles so i'm going to go multiple i'm going to go one okay and interval the distance between each multiple where they are going to land in the ripple so i want for instance let's say 50 feet between each bomb type 50 so just to confirm we've got a quantity of six bombs to be dropped on my button press they are going to drop in single bombs with 50 feet spread between each bomb okay that's my bomb set up i'm going to take off now and go and find targets okay i've identified some targets over here there's a column of armored vehicles there so we're going to get set up so we're going to select our mark 84 we're going to go for the manual drop first ensure that our master arm is up and on select air to ground mode next thing i'm going to do is ufc i'm going to change the reticle depression 
So the reticle, the manual bombing reticle is there. It's just essentially bore sighted, bore fixed to the, the HUD and we can depress it down as much as we need to. We're going to depress it down 80 because that's what seems to work for this bombing profile. So I've selected reticle here, 80 enter and it's depressed down here similar to something like an f5 with manual bombing you see we've got manual here and 80 there now regards to the actual bombing profile we're going to dive from 5000 feet agl our speed is going to be ideally 450 knots but up to 500 knots ias will be fine our angle of dive will be between 10 and 20 degrees and as soon as we get our target in pipa here or that dot over our target we're going to press the weapon release once so we're going to turn on to target. I'm going to turn my HUD to radar altimeter. Just uh, makes it a bit more simple for me. Because we want to drop at an altitude of 1,500 feet. Okay, we're just turning on to target now. We're going to start ramping our speed up and gaining an altitude up to 5,000 AGL. That's close enough. We're going to dive now. Tell our angle of dive, we look at our path uh, vector here, and we can see that we're currently at 15 degrees of dive. Zoom in to get more accuracy. On speed, just waiting for the altitude to drop to 1,500 now. And drop. Okay, so that's that. It's pretty crap method, to be honest. It's not particularly accurate. It's just an ends to a mean if for some reason you can't use the other mode. So the next mode we're going to do is CCIP and it's a lot easier to use. So let's select our bomb. It's the Mark 83. Just going to drop the single bomb again. We're going to turn around and have a look at the symbology. Okay, so while we're lining up, let's talk about the bomb profile again. So it's going to be exactly the same essentially as the manual drop. We're going to be dropping from 5,000 feet AGR with a incline of 10 to 20 degrees with a speed of 450 ideally up to 500 IAS and we're going to get a little bit closer so we can look at that symbology so we'll go for a dry run pass just so I can show uh, well essentially what not to do okay head down to the target Okay, so let's have a look at, at our symbology. First of all, we can see that we've got CCIP aiming mode selected. Here is our CCIP plum drop line. Here is our path vector. Here is our pull-up cue with the angle ticks on the edge, there and there. And here is our release cue, this horizontal line across here. So, things that we don't want to do. We don't want to let the path marker here get below this chap here the pull-up cue. If that happens, then it's going to give you a cross through the screen saying that it's an unsafe release. And this is usually to stop you bombing too low and hitting yourself with your own bomb blast, which I've done on plenty of missions, as you've probably seen. So what will happen is that this release cue will start up fairly high and it will work its way down during the dive. When it gets to the bottom, then it will start, it will change its uh, length ever so slightly and start heading upwards. That's the release cue ready to be used. Now it's going to head up the screen there. And what we want to do is essentially at that point, walk it up the screen to the target rather than chasing it down to the target. So we'll show that in a minute. Other than that, when the release cue cross here is on our target is when we want to drop. Regards, altitude is not too important. Generally Generally, the lower the altitude, the more accurate you're going to be. But remember, if you're going to get too low, then it's going to give you a call of warning and you shouldn't be bombing with a big cross across the screen. So I'm just going to do uh, an abort here just so I can see, show you the cross. There you go. And you see because our path marker is behind the pull-up queue here. Out of interest, you can see the, the bombing cross here now rising from the bottom of the HUD. And that's what we're going to be using to actually aim the bombs. Okay, so let's go around and do it properly. Okay, I think that's far enough. We're going to turn in now. Now, I mentioned the bomb profile earlier, diving from 5,000 feet, an angle of 10 to 20 degrees. I mean, you can go a lot higher and you can go a lot steeper if you want and you will get pretty good results as well. It's just the 10 to 20 degrees is what I've always worked with and what I'm comfortable with. Okay, we're on altitude now. I'm pretty much on speed. So we're going to just zoom in to get the best target and we can now I want to avoid the problem we had earlier where, where our path marker goes below the pull-up queue and that uh, gives us a cool off cross so the way we do that is we essentially dive but we keep our path marker which is the way the actual aircraft is traveling way above 
the target so we're going to have our path marker and keep it roughly here above the target and like we said earlier we're going to drag this cross up uh, uh, to the target and when it hits the target release the bombs if we try to aim our actual aircraft this path marker at the target we would hit the pull-up queue and we'll get in trouble so let's try that now so we're just going to drag that up drag it up and pickle Okay, so that was the CCIP drop. CCI is constantly calculated impact point, by the way. It's really easy to use, really effective, as long as you get that bomb profile right. Okay, so we're moving on to our third method, auto. Now, this is a mode that's often known in other planes as CCRP, constantly calculated release point. The main difference is that we aim the aircraft in terms of azimuth, but regards to the actual bomb drop, that's not controlled by us. It's controlled by the computer, hence constantly calculated release release point. Now another difference is that we have to designate an INS target point on the terrain for this to work. There are two ways of doing this. We can first of all designate from a waypoint or secondly we can designate from the TDC on the HUD. So first of all that show designating from a waypoint. Now you have to have a waypoint set up and I've already got one. If I click on there you can see I've got a waypoint right in the middle of that group there. So let's go and get that done. We're going to move on to our A and B, C, D here. We're going to click on waypoint. We're going to cycle to waypoint one which is the waypoint in question. We're going to click on waypoint designate here. That's converted waypoint one into a target point and you can see we've got TGP, TGT here, a distance to it, and a guide in the form of a uh, diamond here to tell us to turn right to get to it. So let's go and have a quick look at it. And you can see, if I can settle there, that we've got a diamond there showing the target point. Now, if I want to get rid of that, which I'm going to do now, I'm going to press the undesignate button as we looked at earlier. Okay, so the other way is we're going to use the HUD to designate the point for us. So to use the HUD to designate a target, what we want to do is press center select forward. We're going to have to do this in some little jumps, but let's do that. And the first thing of interest is that we have a dot in the middle of our path vector here. Now it's important that we get that dot. If you don't get that dot, you're going to have problems. Now, sometimes you may need to press center select forward more than once, maybe two or three times. I've never understood why, but sometimes you just have to do that. If after two or three presses it's still not getting that dot in the middle, then it's probably because you've got either of your DDIs, your left or your right here, selected as your center of interest. That happened to me a lot. It's very frustrating when that happens. Uh, you'll know because it'll have a little star at the top right of either of the screens if if that's the case then just press center select back then center select forward and that will definitely work in that case what i need to do now is select my bombs right so i've got my auto symbology here and i'm just going to pull up because it's not very good representation that's a little bit better so what we've got here is like i said before we've got the dot in the middle of the of the path marker to say that the HUD is the center of interest now. We've also got what we call a ball and chain, um, our auto targeting symbology. We've got a dashed plumb line down from the path vector here. We've got it slightly off the screen, but we've got a target dot there surrounded by this rose here. Now, the whole idea of what we want to do is maneuver our aircraft so that this dot is on the target that we want to designate. Once we've got it on target, we're going to press the TDC depress button, which will lock wherever that is at the point, a target, an INS target point. So we're going to try and do that now. We're going to have to do it quite quickly. Zoom in to maximum detail. Let's try and get it right in the middle if we can. And pop. There. You see I pressed uh, TDC, depress, and it's got me a point right there. Now, interestingly, I can A, cancel it with the undesignated button like we saw before. B, we can move it around. Again, as long as we've got a dot in the path vector here, we can move it around with TDC up, left, down, and right. So I'm going to try that now. So you see, blah, 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 move it about. Now I'm going to cancel that with undesignate and I'm now going to mark a target again pick and I've got a new target and you can see that we've got a target because we've got our TGT point here we've got a distance to it so we're all ready to bomb now now I've used up too much time talking we're too close to the target to do it now so what we'll do is we'll head out to sea we'll turn back around and then we'll discuss how we're going to actually do the auto bombing Okay, we're going to start turning in now. Now, the bombing profile is a little bit different. For a start, it's going to be level or nearly level. We're not going to be in a dive or an incline, and certainly not on a major angle. 
regards speed to be honest it doesn't really matter but general common sense says go fast because it's going to help you avoid ground fire so if you can stick to your 450 knots again that's going to be a good idea altitude mm, doesn't really matter the lower you are the more accurate it's going to be with a minimum altitude of 1000 feet agl so that we can avoid any damage from our own bombs head to the target now and we're going to be sending out a ripple of bombs this time rather than a single bomb so i want to really um arrange ourselves so that we're going to head down that road so we get all the targets in one <clears throat> so let's just talk about our auto symbology here first of all we've got our bomb plumb line here and that's aligned not to my aircraft but this it time is aligned to the target point that we've set our job now is to fly our aircraft as level as we can so that means wings level and aimed perfectly at that plumb line here so we want to get our dot in the middle of, of our path vector here perfectly in line with this line and keep it in line as much as we can there's going to be a tendency as we get closer to kind of chase that line and sway pilot induced oscillation which you get with lots of things like this so the, the, the job is to try to try and keep it settled as possible the more settled we can keep it on that line the more accurate our bomb will be as well as that keep everything else as steady, steady as we can so our roll our speed and our climb uh, we, are, we can tell that we're in auto mode here we have a countdown here so that's saying that we have 70 seconds till the release point and we've got the distance to the target now there so what we're going to do is head towards the target we're going to get ourselves pretty much level we're going to get ourselves arranged so that our path marker is directly on this line we're going to keep going until we are about five seconds away from the target at that point we're going to press and hold our weapon release and hold until what we will see is a release cue work its way down as a horizontal line down this plumb line here until it reaches our path vector here once it releases our path vector here it will drop the bombs keep press and hold until all of the bombs have dropped i need to punch up the speed get ourselves pretty much level arrange ourselves on this line Keep an eye on the timer on the left. Zoom in, mac maximum accuracy. 20 seconds. Press and hold release. Here comes the cue. Bombs are dropped. Check the bombs are gone. They are. Out of interest, we get uh, some extra information here. Once the bombs have dropped, we no longer have a countdown. We now have a TTI, time till impact of the bombs, nine seconds. So I don't really know why you'd want to know that, but that is there. Out of interest as well, we also have, because we've designated a point on the ground, we have symbology telling us how to fly to that point. You can see we've got an arrow here saying it's basically below or underneath us at the moment. If it was off to our left or right, then it would have the equivalent arrow, as well as our diamond up here in the heading tape. That was a pretty cool ripple what i should have done is change my interval from 50 feet to more like 100 or 150 feet so i could have spread them out but you get the idea if you want to do a more accurate version of that ripple bombing you can use snake eyes high drag bombs that allows you to drop them on much lower right down at a couple of hundred feet now, i've got a separate video on showing how to do that so that's shown everything i want to do we've showed how to bomb in manual aiming how to bomb in ccrp aiming how to bomb in auto or ccrp bombing how to set up our program for the bombs how to set up our fuses and drop mode for the bombs and how to send out single bombs and how to send out ripples i hope that helps and i'll see you later